Hey guys, this is Andrew, and this is part three of my workbench build, which is all about finishing out the top, epoxy, flattening, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to set up the flattening jig and get right to it. I've put my router sled on here. I've also replaced or remade these two little slide gizmos that go on the side rails. Made those out of high density, high molecular weight polyethylene. So those are new in the meantime. You didn't have to endure that. Um, to set all these rails up, I basically used my laser level right here. This thing's super handy inside the house. I haven't really used it out in the shop that much, but I basically leveled the bottom of the top because that was the thing that I had um, flattened out last. So it's probably more flat than the top. I leveled the bottom of the top and then I leveled my rails all the way around. So they've got plenty of support. They're plenty level, I think. I use this little stick here, like a story stick, and went all the way around like that. Mark my line, like so, something like that. And we're going to be pretty level um, throughout. So we're ready to we're ready to router sled this thing, and then we'll get to finishing. So like with anything, if you get the jig set up right, the actual process here is very simple and quick, and I'm not using anything fancy. I've got like a three-quarter inch bit on here, and I just wail through this in a hurry. Um, yeah, this is nothing to be intimidated over, that's for sure. More or less flat, and I'm going to take off a little bit more. I just adjusted my router down ever so slightly. I'm going to put a mark on it here just to kind of see where I'm at. So right here I'm barely taking anything more off. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch at most. But that's about it. There was just maybe a couple spots in here that need a little bit of contact with the bit. So right now I'm just taking off my clamps and getting ready to do some epoxy work here. I've got everything flattened out and I'm, I'm satisfied. I just did a little light sanding off camera. Not too much because the epoxy is going to demand more sanding after that's done. So I've got two things I need to do with the epoxy. One, I need to fill in these major voids in here. They're all over. I mean, they're, they're huge holes, right? That need to be filled in to get everything nice and level. So that's one thing, and I'm gonna use a tabletop epoxy to do that. The holes are not, you know, it's not like pouring a slab or anything. They're not super thick. I don't think I have to worry about temperature, any of that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, like one inch diameter holes at the most, probably. So I'll use tabletop epoxy to fill those in. Maybe I'll even throw some crap down in there to use less epoxy, I don't know, whatever. Um, they just gotta be filled in so we make a solid top. And then the other thing that I need to do is infuse the top um, with kind of like a deep penetrating epoxy. So I bought two different epoxies. The deep penetrating stuff will be the second thing to go on here. And I don't wanna have a coating like I've said. So what I plan to do is cover this table, and you'll see this in, the, in a minute, cover the table with a tarp and put a heater under it. And I have a heater and a temperature regulator or a temperature uh, thermostat for that heater. I'll put all that underneath here, get the, the uh, workbench up in temperature a little bit, probably, I don't know. Let's say if I get it up to, you know, 80 degrees or whatever, so it's a little warmer than the room, and we'll, we'll try that. Maybe it's got to be hotter, I don't know. Maybe it's got to be like, uh, you know, 90 degrees or something. Something to get that viscosity just a little bit less than it would normally be, but not to have the room where I have to worry about the, the 
epoxy setting on me faster than it should. So that's kind of the trick I'm going to play here and we'll see how it works. I'm putting this fan underneath here. I'm going to turn it on lower setting and turn this bottom down. down. I don't know that this is necessarily a super good idea. I do have a temperature controller, but I don't have batteries for the controller. It's not highly sealed off in there, so I don't think it's going to get that hot. The room is not going to be hot. I'm probably going to keep the room like 55 degrees or something tonight. So this is the next day. The room has been like 55 degrees in here overnight. I kicked it up to 70, but underneath, almost 93 degrees underneath there, out in the room, it should come down to around 70, because that's 70, 71, because that's what it is in the room. I'm gonna take the tarp off, and I know that the top will cool down a little bit, but not substantially probably, because it's pretty thick. I'll give it a little final cleaning and then we'll mix up epoxy and start filling in holes. All right, well, I'm taking a bit of a risk here because no doubt some of this is gonna dribble all the way through the top and come out the bottom. I don't know, we'll find out. Before I get too crazy, I'm gonna add some of this uh, carbon black on here. I never quite know how much to add, so we'll just add a bunch. That's probably a lot, right? I don't know. I have no idea. Stir that in. Okay. All right, let's try that again. I'm gonna drop a little bit of this on here. So if you've never tried filling little bug holes and cracks and whatever with epoxy, Go ahead and try it sometime, and then you'll be glad to get back to sanding because it is a tedious process. Now you see I'm using a syringe here, and the syringe actually helps a lot because at least you can kind of control where you're putting the epoxy better than just dribbling it off the end of a cup or a stick or such. The heat gun was probably an unnecessary exercise, but I'm in the habit. And here we're back to filling in more epoxy. So what did I say? Filling in these holes is more painful than sanding. And I'm not going to make you endure all of it with me, but at least a little bit. Round one of epoxy hole filling is kind of complete. But I've got a few of these along the edge that I need to finish off because I got anxious and I had to start. And I thought, well, I'll just mix some up and see how it goes because I haven't messed with the epoxy for a while so we got started and we'll finish off with some of these that means I only have to mix up like a small cup of the stuff and then you know some of these they tend to sink down in a little bit and it's hard to tell how much they're going to sink down in because you don't know what kind of holes and rot and whatever are in the wood so we got a few of those to top off I'll try and top them off before the epoxy really sets up completely and as long as I think it's like partially set, the two layers will adhere together better than if you allow one that's completely set up. And then after that, we'll do the, uh, the uh, deep penetrating epoxy on here. That's looking pretty good so far. No drips underneath. That's a good sign. I'm not worried at all about the floor because that's already got like layers of epoxy on it. But I do not want to have like a big drip coming out of the bottom of the workbench top. Now at this point, I wouldn't blame you if you actually grabbed your scroll bar and went forward just a bit. But the point is that epoxy is not a quick process. It is actually worse than sanding, especially when you're filling in a lot of these little holes. And sometimes people make this look way too easy on YouTube and it is not that easy to do. It takes patience, it takes doing it over and over again. Now here you're seeing I am trying to get rid of some excess using a heat gun and a nice sharp chisel. That actually works very well. 
big advantage to getting some of this epoxy off in that manner rather than having to use the painful method of sanding it completely off. So I'll take this, uh, I'll take that method any day here. Actually it works pretty good. It just takes a little bit of practice to get the technique down and kind of get the heat right. I think I've got the heat on the lower setting and I'm just heating ahead of the, uh, of the chisel there. And getting after it with the sander, I am using those 3M extract sanding discs, which work pretty good for this actually. Another round of sanding completed. Gotta love it. It's fun. Try it sometime. Anyway, we did get all of we. I don't know. We in the sand. Me in the sander. Okay, we've got. The uh, places where the epoxy was proud of the surface sanded down so they're flat, nice and flat with the surface and uh, all of that. We're ready to put the deep penetrating epoxy on here. I'm going to take the air hose and I'm going to clean off the surface with the air hose, give it a nice blow down there and get all of those uh, dust particles back out of the fiber so the deep penetrating epoxy can get down in there. I'm also going to add, because, well this is because I'm a lazy guy, I'm going to add carbon black to the deep penetrating epoxy. Uh, and the reason why is because where I spilled the epoxy on here, it already has this sort of infused um, infusion of that carbon black into the fibers and I don't want to fight that by having to resurface this entire thing again. Uh, I'm sure if I took off like a 64th or a 32nd or whatever it would get rid of all of it except for the, the major holes where I was trying to fill in but I'm too lazy to do that and the surface is already flat. I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to do it for me, and I'm not going to do it for you. So uh, we're just going to make all of this consistent by adding that carbon black into the deep penetrating epoxy, and that's what we'll do next. Hopefully that works. All right, we're going to clean off, clean off the surface here. There's a lot of dust in there from the sanding. This is the deep penetrating epoxy. You can tell it's very watery. I added carbon black to it. I have no idea how much I'm going to use on this top. I think this is enough in this cup here, but we shall find out. Given it a plenty of a stir here. I also don't know how fast it reacts exactly. I've never worked with this before. Lots to learn here. Well, the one good thing is that it's not thick, so if I have to sand it off, that's not a big deal. I've got some teeth on here. You can see that. If I was to do this exercise again, I would squeegee off the excess between coats and put on 
several additional coats rather than trying to sort of flood coat it and hope that things went down in the cracks. I think that would have made sanding a lot easier. Well, I'm gonna have to double up my batch and make some more. So this is gonna be cup number two. I really had no idea how much this was gonna take. So trying to be conservative and start out not wasting everything. There's a ton of little holes in here and I don't know that they're necessarily gonna be all filled in. Wormholes and such. I'm not super worried about that. Okay. I've got some really bad uh, cracks along the edge here that I'm hoping this will go down and seal those cracks. The carbon black really did a great job of getting down into the pores of that red oak, but I'm kind of wondering if a liquid pigment would have been an even better option than what I was doing here. Friends, I don't know how this is going to turn out. It is a grand and mysterious experiment. We do have leaks. We have bubbles. The bubbles are no troubles. We have bug holes that probably will not fill, and I'm not too worried about those either. So let's get ready, remove the tape, and commence some sanding. Did I say that filling holes with epoxy was more painful than sanding? I don't know right now. Even the dog is tired of my sanding. But it's starting to look really good. I actually, I like this because I added that carbon black in there. And so wherever there's pores in the grain of the wood, that carbon black has got in here. And it takes away a little bit of the reddishness of the red oak. I uh, got to do a little bit more spot filling here. So do a little bit of that. You can see some of these cracks that uh, thin. Uh, deep penetrating epoxy just kind of worked its way down in there. So it's probably down in there an inch or half inch or whatever it is. And we'll just have to keep putting some in these cracks with a syringe. The syringes work great. So I just bought like a hundred of them off of Amazon. I'm continuing to endure the pain of trying to fill cracks. I'm going to spare you the pain of watching me fill any more of this. And the next time you see it, I think I'll have it sanded off because uh, you don't need to see sanding either, do you? I'm actually going to limit the number of dog holes that I'm putting in the bench right now because I don't know just yet where I want them. So I am going to put some in on this side because I would plane to the left and I'll put some in over on the opposite side over there, planing off to the left. Now what I have right here with my layout is I took a piece of plexiglass and I made just a small hole in there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use that to put a, uh, to line up on top of my marks and start my pilot hole. What I found in kind of any kind of wood is that if you just try to drill straight down without doing something like this to guide that hole, the grain and the wood itself wants to um, cause your hole to wander one way or the other. So I'm just kind of doing this to make a, a starter pilot hole. And you can see I've got double stick tape on the back side here. And hopefully this will work without moving. Looks like it's fairly lined up. Touch down there and then see if we can move that out and go to the next one. I am skipping this area right here because that's where I've got a, a beam going across from the leg. I'm not too worried about that.
Friends, if you just keep looking at the top of the holes with that nice chamfer in there, that'll make me happy. We're not going to talk about the fact that the holes are a little bit crooked until the end of the video. And of course, here you can see that I'm going around putting a little chamfer on the top edge all the way around. And then a little bit of finish to... Uh, Kind of recover some spots that I had to sand down because of the epoxy dribbling down the sides. I wasn't entirely sure what to put on the top, but I decided to try this butcher's wax. And in hindsight, it would not be my first choice, which I'll explain in a little bit here what happened. Kind of a odd thing that happened between the butcher's wax and the uh, epoxy that was filling in the cracks. Anyway, it looked beautiful. It was just ridiculously slippery. I'm gonna make some confessions and talk about the weirdness here for a second. The confession is, number one, the dog holes are not perfectly straight because my jig was not perfectly straight and I was an idiot and assumed that it was straight. You know what happens when you assume not very good things happen. So, you can't see it, but I know it and it just, kills my pride in the workbench. So pride hit number one is the dog holes. That's really the, the thing that hurt the worst out of any of this build. Number two, um, you saw me put the butcher's wax on here. I will say don't do the butcher's wax in spite of the fact that that looked absolutely awesome. You run your hand on it. It's smooth. The problem is, for a workbench, it's way too smooth and impractical. I tried using this thing, and it, it board just slid everywhere on it. it. It was totally useless. Being like on a skating rink, right? Don't do as I did. Do something different. Which leads me to point number three. I had the epoxy on here. I filled all these cracks with epoxy, blah, blah, blah. And I put the butcher's wax on and the butcher's wax somehow caused, at least this is what I think happened, the butcher's wax caused the epoxy in the cracks to swell ever so slightly. So you actually didn't feel that where there was a larger um, fill in of epoxy, but just where it was like a very small hairline crack filled in, you could actually feel a ridge where that epoxy swelled up by, you know, maybe like a half a thousandth of an inch or something. I mean, just what you can feel with your fingertips, which isn't very much, but enough to be kind of annoying. So at that point, that's where I ended up sanding all this down with 320 grit, just enough to knock those ridges off. And instead of the butcher's wax, I took some boiled linseed oil and thinned it out and put that on the top. And now we end up with a top that has a little bit better friction, still has a really nice feel to it. It still looks good. I wish it wasn't maybe quite as reddish as it is, but that is red oak, I guess. Red, red oak. Um, and much more functional. So there you have it. There's my, there's my final take. And I'm glad that you watched all the way to the end of the video so you could hear my confessional and I feel better getting all this off my chest. I hope to see you around on the next one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.